first and foremost, uh, even though I like going to the pubs, there's not beer in here. We have fry, we have fry. Holy crap, we have a lot of fry in the fish room today. I'm gonna show you the foods that I feed my fry to be successful, and also what you could feed yours to even up your game and be more successful yourself. I promise you I got some stuff that you probably don't use yourself. I sell it yourself a lot, but let's jump right into it. We're starting off with brine shrimp. Baby brine shrimp is the staple that you should have in any fish room. Right now, I have been using brine shrimp direct uh, for their eggs, but Aquarium Co-op just came out with their new frozen brine shrimp eggs. Testing that out. Uh, turned off this just for the video, but we got some brine shrimp direct brine shrimp hatched out in here and that's what I use to feed any fry big enough to do so these will eat it these will eat it even fish this big will eat it even though it's quite a small food but since that it's live has a lot of nutrition any rainbow fish breeder or egg layer breeder who knows his stuff knows you need micro foods so to start off, I usually go for the Golden Pearls 5 to 50 micron. That is tiny, but that's how tiny some of our fry are when they first hatch out. Another alternative uh, that I like to use is the container that just fell down. It's Sarah Micron. So another good small food, but it isn't my favorite. It's something I like to mix in there just because it has spirulina and other good stuff that golden pearls might not have. This one might throw you for a loop. It's bee pollen powder. Now you may be thinking, why would I put bee pollen in my fish tanks? Well, bee pollen is just pollen that bees have collected. And if you think about nature, pollen is part of uh, microfauna and naturally occurring seasonally in a lot of waterways. Another thing that I like to feed that is I believe a single-celled algae is chlorella. Chlorella according to Gary Lang is a superior algae to spirulina. I've found pretty good growth right out of all of these foods but chlorella is definitely a very fine uh, powder food and fry tend to eat it powdered foods I like to incorporate, again, here's the Sarah Micron, is um, once they get a bit bigger and able to eat brine shrimp, but you may not have anything hatched out yet, is a uh, fry crack. You can find this on Aquabid uh, or his email listed on the package. I found a lot of fry to go nuts over this, hence the name. Uh, but this small quantity goes a long way you don't need a lot of it this was a free sample that uh, Paul sent in another one that I like to occasionally throw in is copepod powder so this is about 200 microns so a lot bigger and not able to be eaten by the smallest of fry but nonetheless a good option say apple cider vinegar is good for you well it's also good for your fish if there's vinegar eels in there this is a very, very small micro food uh, that is great for your fry. The baby vinegar eels should be able to be eaten by even rainbow fish fry at first hatch. The adults, a bit bigger. Um, but we can go over how to maintain a culture later. I'm going to show you later on in this video how to harvest them. You could have a smaller sieve that I collect brine shrimp in, vinegar eels are going to pass through this, and this is a very fine mesh. You're going to need about a 50 micron sieve to get 
the uh, vinegar eels, that's about a 200 micron sieve. To harvest your vinegar eels, you're going to want a long-necked bottle. In this case, I got a bottle of, uh, or empty bottle of Corona and a funnel. Funnel is important. You're not going to be able to be successful uh, unless you got a funnel, unless you want to make a mess. But just pour your fluid down into the bottle. This has apple cider vinegar, water, and vinegar eels. We're going to fill it up just to about, that's even a little bit much, but what we're going to do now is take a cotton ball, we're going to shove that into the bottle, and you're going to watch me struggle to shove a cotton ball down in there. Let it kind of expand again, push it down just so it touches the mixture will start soaking up some of that and now we're gonna put fresh dechlorinated tap water not tank water into there and the vinegar eels are so small they can pass through that cotton ball into the fresh water what this is doing is you're choking out the vinegar eels making them go to the surface for oxygen kind of uh, messed up if you think about it but great food for your fry you just siphon that out and you're not putting vinegar in your tank and now you may be wondering okay so where are the vinegar eels it's gonna take a while so in the meantime we may have to feed out powdered foods I'm going to show you a couple methods you can use to uh, feed your powdered foods. So this is not an original idea by me. This is something I've seen first by Dean from Aquarium Co-op and then also from Jadron Aquatics. Shout out to him. He's got a very nice channel. Uh, this is an excessively large paintbrush. We don't really need this, but you can dip that into your powder and then tap it on the side of your tank into whatever enclosure you have your fry. Now, I don't really want to use a paintbrush this big. What I can do is just dip my finger in there. It gets, uh, focus. Well, there's powder on there. I just don't really move my hand too much. I take my finger and I flick. And it won't show up on video because it's a very fine powder, but it just dusts the surface of the water with that powdered food. I recommend feeding fry, especially young fry, four to six times a day. Now, you may be thinking, that's a lot of food. It's, it is and it isn't. So you're not feeding excessively large quantities all at one time. You want to feed so they're grazing throughout the day and able to grow. And if you have all of these foods available to you, like I do, and there's even more that you can get, just rotate them throughout the day so they have a lot of different nutrient profiles. That's going to help them uh, get those building blocks to grow and grow successfully. Uh, now, if you only do brine shrimp and the golden pearls for a rainbow fish breeder, that's the only two things you need. But variety is the spice of life is the main theme I think we find. So this is about five hours later, give or take. And as you can see, there are some vinegar eels that came up through the cotton into the neck of the bottle. Now this isn't all of the vinegar eels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest some of this and then replace it with fresh water and you'll be able to get not a continuous, but a couple harvests out of this if you do it every, say, three to five hours or so. But by tomorrow morning, um, that's going to be about it. Last but not least, I'm going to show you how I feed uh, some Walter worms. 
the reason why it's green and you don't see a lot of green in there is I put chlorella powder in here. So if you think about it, a lot of your microorm cultures are just a carbohydrate. Like uh, Cory from Aquarium Co-op uses mashed potatoes. Um, a lot of the cultures recommend oatmeal. Put some fry food in there. The You'll see on the edges, yeah, these worms are a bit whitish, but if you get up and close in there, uh, they are slightly green. So they will be eating whatever you put in there to an extent. I've done it with Ceramicron. I've done it with Copepod powder. The Copepod powder will turn them orange. So increase the nutrition of your fry and you're going to have better colors earlier. So the thing that you have to take into account is these sink. They're not going to be swimming around into the water column like some of your vinegar eels or baby brine shrimp. So what I do is I just take a pipette, scrape some on the side. I didn't get very much there. There we go. This is a good amount of Walter worms there. Um, I'm sure these will, this size fry would try to eat it. This size could probably eat it, but I like to do it for a pretty small fry, uh, like these rams here who are getting a, a little bit of size on them, but are still needing micro foods. So also what you're going to find is this will kind of clump up and sink as one. So what I do is I put it in the water and I suck up as much as I can into the pipette. So yes, there's a cloud of worms right there that you can see. But now I also have the freedom to squirt more worms in there. So we're going to use that, feed out some of the other fry. With rainbow fry, they are surface fish. So what I'm going to do is try to squirt it um, horizontally, just like that. And that'll give them a little bit of time to eat those worms. So the main thing you got to look at when you're feeding fry is feed the right size. If you try to feed a uh, one day old rainbow fish fry, baby brine shrimp, they won't be able to eat it. So make sure you're feeding the right size foods, otherwise you're just polluting your water. And that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions on what else you can feed fry, drop them in the comments below. If you want more fish-related content, you don't have to, but I highly suggest that you uh, give the channel a subscription, or subscribe to the channel, and uh, like the video. It helps me out a lot, uh, especially as a small channel it would do wonders. Well, until next time, hope you enjoy your fry. I am definitely enjoying watching my fry grow up. And I guess this is the, the end.